please welcome to the stage, Samuel Rao. A little over three years ago, on a Friday night after work in Midland, Texas, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I decided to go and spend some time with my father. I get to his house, we're sitting on the back patio, smoking cigarettes, laughing, joking, and I ask him what his plans are for the weekend. And he tells me that the previous weekend, uh, he had gone to this new church and that he had really enjoyed the sermon and that he was really looking forward to going to this weekend's sermon. And, I mean, I had gone to church with my father before and we'd usually gone to this one specific church and I said, hey, Dad, what happened to, to Stonegate? Why'd you quit going to Stonegate? And he said, uh, oh, I quit going to Stonegate when they started letting the queers in. Let that sink. <laughs> <laughs> so before I continue, I need to explain that at the time, to me, sexuality, sexual preference was like a super salad choice at the time. It was like, oh, you either, you either want soup or you want salad. And, you know, you wouldn't really, like, disown somebody or be hateful or rude to somebody just because they ordered salad, you know, instead of you ordering soup. So that was kind of the argument that started between me and my father. And he turns to me and he says, uh, the Bible says it's an abomination, you know, I said, you know, the Bible also says that all sin is equal, even if being gay was a sin. That, he didn't like that. <laughs> and he said, how would you feel if somebody told you that you had to be gay? <laughs> I'm sorry? And he says, how would you feel if somebody told you that you had to have sex with another man? And, you know, I thought about it, and I said, you know, Dad, I mean, I don't think I've ever heard anybody from the LGBT community say that anybody had to follow their sexual preference. The only people I hear pushing their sexual agenda on people is you. <laughs> and he turns to me, and he says, are you gay? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Is that what you're trying to tell me, that you're gay? <laughs> and I'm like, no, Dad. I'm not gay, but I have to ask. If I was, what would you do? And he said, well, let's just be thankful we don't ever have to cross that road. <sighs> I left my dad's house that night pretty upset. And it was just kind of one of those days, you know, where really all you want to do is just kind of go home and aggressively masturbate and then fall asleep. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I get into bed, and I start, and I'm thinking about boobs and whatever it was that I was thinking about three years ago, I can't even tell you, and all of a sudden, my dad's words kind of enter into my head, and he's like, are you gay, are you gay? And, and, and my own words kind of come back, and at the same time, I'm like, no, no, you know? And, uh, but then I, I kept thinking about it, and, and, and how he was like, oh, let's just be thankful that we don't ever have to cross that bridge. I was like, so you're telling me that if I pick soup, you're going to disown me. That's essentially what you're saying. You know, you know, I should just fuck some guy just to, just, just, just to spite you. So I don't know if anybody knows what it's like when you get an idea stuck in your head. <laughs> you know, and it's like, it's, like, it's like weeds under concrete, you know? Like they keep coming up through the cracks and no matter how many times you spray them down or pull out the weeds, like they keep coming up. And I didn't even mean to tie the words in my head together, but it just all of a sudden I just kind of sighed and I was just like, I'm gonna have to have sex with a man. <laughs> 
So now again, mind you, I'm not gay. I'm straight. This is out of spite for my father. So, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit curious. You know, I mean, I'm young, 21. You know, sure, why not, right? So I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, God, I'm in Midland, Texas. This is not a safe place for anybody in the LGBT community. Yeah, yeah, ooh. And I only knew of one, uh, there was one gay club that I knew, it was called Sin City, and like, I knew the owners of it, and like, I, I thought about going there, but I was really worried about like, d getting caught, and you know, it's like, whenever you get in that mode, you know, it's like, oh, you know, crap, like, I don't want anybody to see me, you know? So I had to s start thinking about, you know, like, how am I gonna make this happen? And, you know, it's a lot harder to find a guy to fuck you than like, a lot of people talk about, you know? <laughs> And so, like, before, it's like I had heard girls or women say before, you know, it's so, so hard to find a good guy, you know? And it's like, oh, you know, you, it's so easy for you. Don't even lie. No, after this, I know. It's hard. Believe me. <laughs> so I weighed my options, and I did what anybody, and what any red-blooded American would do, I went on to Craigslist. <laughs> oh, you've heard of it. <laughs> Casual encounters, man for man, anonymous male seeks anonymous versatile male. It was my golden ticket and I had found it. And so I was like, okay, this, this is perfect. So I send him a message and I explain to him the whole thing, you know, not in great detail, because that's kind of weird. But I mean, I just told him that it was kind of an experiment and I just, I just needed to get it out of my system. You know, just, I needed to do it and would he be willing to? And he said yes. And so I, I got off work the next day, uh, drove over to his apartment, you know, and it's really unnerving, by the way. You know, you're walking up to somebody's apartment that you've never been to before in your life and a part of me is wondering, it's like, oh my God, what if my family's catfishing me, <laughs> you know? Like, I'm gonna open that door and my grandparents are gonna be there and like, they're all just gonna be giving me really like, disappointed looks. <laughs> but I open the door and it's just some regular guy. Might as well have been named Joe. You know, just some, just some guy that you would have seen on the road, you know, or on, you know, at the post office or just anywhere. And I remember he tried to get me to come and sit down and watch TV. He was like, here, you want to watch TV? He's like, no, I mean, let's just, let's get, let's get to it, man. You know, <laughs> let's, let's, let's make this thing happen, you know? And uh, so he's like, okay. And we get into the back room and he shuts the door and I will never forget this. He came across the room in a way and like he, when he did it, when he got to me, like he grabbed my genitals like in his hand. Cause like I'm 6'4 and he was like 5'5", five, five, you know? And so like he moved across the room, but he like glided. It, like his feet didn't even touch the floor. It, and, it, and it wasn't even, and, and I don't mean like in a creepy horror movie way. I mean like in a really aggressive kind of way. You know what I mean? And he grabbed me and it, it scared me. I was like, whoa, whoa, okay. You know, and, and, and he started to undo my belt buckle and, you know, pulled, pulled my pants down, you know, and he started to suck my dick. And I was watching this gentleman blow me. And I'm, and from what I can see, I can tell that he's doing a really great job. <laughs> but there's, there's something that's not clicking. I don't understand. Like, I can see that you're doing really well but there's nothing happening here. Let's, let's keep it moving. Let's, let's, just keep, let's just keep going. So, I mean, it, it came down to the moment of truth. I was gonna get fucked in the ass. We're just gonna leave that, or leave that here right now. And of, and of course, I helped him, you know, make sure, you know, he was all ready and safe, got a condom and everything. And I assumed the position, got on my hands there on the side of the bed, and I was ready, I was ready, you know? <laughs> And the second I felt contact, <laughs> I knew immediately that that was not where I wanted to be at all. I kindly stopped, pushed him away, and I said, thank you so much. 
I'm going to leave now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> put my clothes on, kind of grab my things, thank you, thank you, thank you, walk out, you know. <laughs> and I get outside, and I'm like, what the hell was that? You know? <laughs> like, I was in there, you know, he was, he was doing a great job, you know, every, everything was going great. I was like, but there were just, what happened? Where was that connection, the, the thing that happened that just said, you know, hey, I, I, I decided to sleep with this guy. I went there, it started, but nothing happened. And it clicked in my head at that moment that sexual preference is not a choice. <laughs> And it made me realize that it's actually something much deeper ingrained in people than that. And now it's, at first, you know, I would have been willing to have the argument with my dad. I would have been willing to have that argument with anybody. But no, not anymore. No more arguments. Fuck you if you don't think, you know, that it's something deeper than that, you know. And I was, I was stupid to not, to, to not see things that way. But, you know, I'm really thankful, you know, especially to my dad. You know, because this is a perspective that not many straight men get the chance to have, you know? You know what I mean? And it just made me think, you know, I spent that short amount of time, you know, afraid and worried, you know, of being judged. And it just made me realize, you know, how many other people there are that spend their entire lives that way. And I'm glad that I know that now. Thank you. <laughs>